Greet you all once again in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why don't you all take our Bibles and turn to the book of Revelation, the last book, and go to chapter 19, the same passage that we've been seeing for quite some time, so that you know what God is doing and what He's going to do and how He has planned to come and take possession of the earth that He created. So why don't we stand up, each and every one of you who can, in the house of God, with your Bibles in your hand and let us start from the book of Revelation chapter 19 from verse 11 till verse 16 and then after that we'll go to the book of Numbers. So first let us read from the book of Revelation chapter 19 from verse 11 all together. Now I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns he had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords let us go to the book Numbers chapter 13 from verse 1 till verse 3 book of Numbers chapter 13 from verse 1 till verse 3 Okay, let us start from verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man. Everyone, everyone a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of them men who were heads of the children of of Israel. Thank you. you. May be seated at this time. This is just the beginning of what we will see from this chapter and the next. But what happened when God spoke to the children of Israel and how He wanted them to take possession of the land that He had promised to the forefathers. This morning, before that, I want to encourage you and strengthen you and know that the Lord whom you follow is a God of wisdom, the God who has all might, the God who is the creator of heaven and earth and we are not here and we do not have a faith that is something which needs to be laughed at we are here and we are sensible and we are the ones who know the truth and we know that God is wisdom and Jesus Christ came and revealed the truth to us there are many mighty men of God there are many wonderful brilliant people in the world who have accepted Jesus Christ one such person who was high up in the secular world respected in the medical field and most of you would have known how what he was part of almost changed the world view and changed the world of medicine his name is Francis Collins he was born in April 14 1950 and he's still alive he's an American geneticist who was the one who discovered genes which cause genetic diseases in 2009 he was made the director of the US, US National Institute of Health and also the director of the Human Genome Project. You would have heard about that, how for years certain scientists and people in the medical field got together to map out the human gene. He started by getting a bachelor in science from the University of Virginia in 1970 and then in Yale University got MS and also a PhD in 1974. He earned an MD in 1977 from the University of North Carolina. I'm telling you all this so that you know what his background in and when I tell you finally who he believes in so that you know that he's not someone who's loony, who's lost his mind, that he should believe in Jesus. In 1984, Collins joined as an assistant professor of the University of Michigan. In 1989, he announced the discovery of the gene that causes 
cystic fibrosis. In 1990, he led a team that found the gene that causes neurofibromatosis, a genetic disorder that generates the growth of tumors. In 1993, he served as a leading researcher in a collaboration of six laboratories which uncovered the gene that causes Huntington Korea neurological disease. In 1993, he took the post as the head of the National Human Genome Research Institute and he began the work which was already going on there for three years with a stated goal of completing the sequencing project which took almost 15 years at the cost of $3 billion. He is a practicing Christian. Collins was the one who actively cautioned the United States government and the leaders there against the misuse of genetic information. You can see that he believed in the Lord. He likes to play his guitar. And here in one of the pictures, you can see that he is there in the National Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C. in 2004, as even the U.S. President George W. Bush is listening to him be the one who leads that service. On August 1st, 2008, he resigned from that position as a director in NG, NHGRI to pursue his other interests. But in 2009, President Barack Obama again nominated Collins to be the head of the NIH, and soon he was approved even by the Senate in October 2009. Pope Benedict put him to the Pontificate Academy of Sciences, an organization that promotes the advancement in the fundamental understanding of scientific questions and the investigation of ethical and philosophical issues associated with science. At his graduate school, Collins considered himself an atheist. But as he was there in the hospital as a doctor, one of the patients questioned him, and the questions that the patient asked him made him understand that he needs to investigate his religious views and the various faiths that are there. So that started it, his hunt to know the truth. You can be a patient, you can be someone who is at the receiving side of any care or maybe even you're just joined in an office or in a company and there might be other superiors who are there who are experts but your words make a difference we've been seeing how you need to be a witness it was a patient who spoke to him and started him on this path of discovery that he started questioning his lack of religious views and so he investigated all the various faiths that are there at that time and then he familiarized himself with the evidence for and against God in cosmology. He was recommended by a Methodist minister to read Mere Christianity, a book by C.S. Lewis, and that became as a foundation for him to develop his Christian views. And after several years of deliberation and pondering and considering all the things that are there, he finally converted to Christianity. When he went on a trip to the Cascade Mountains, he said he saw something in nature that was a marvel, a frozen waterfall. The next morning he got up and he s describes himself as a serious Christian after that. He is the one who wrote the book which is titled The Language of God, A Scientist Presents Evidence for Belief in 2006. And he's still on the path to discovery because I do not accept some of his views about God and about the Bible, but I'm sure he will still pursue God and he will be able to accept all that God has revealed in his word. But he's on the right path, starting as an atheist and become an agnostic and finally accepting Jesus Christ. So you're not alone in this walk, in this world. There are wonderful leaders in the world who believe in Jesus and they're not lost in their mind. You are sound in your mind. The devil and the world might try to mock you and make you, might make you feel that you're not right. But I want to encourage and tell you that you're on the right path as you follow Jesus Christ. What we see in the Old Testament is not something that we can cast aside and say that only the New Testament is sufficient and necessary for us. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, in verse 11, you can read from verse 6 later at home if you want, where it says, now these things... He is listing to the things that happened to the children of Israel as they became a nation. And so he's saying, now these things happened to them as examples. And they were written. The whole Old Testament was written 
for an admonition, for a warning upon whom the ends of the ages have come. God has written all that is there in his word as a warning for us. For we live at a time when the end is about to come. He wrote this 2,000 years ago. So how many believe that the end is even more closer? We've got to always expect the return of the Lord Jesus Christ for this age will end. And then the next will start. But at that time you should be taken up to be with God for the worst days the world has ever seen will come upon the earth. Many were shaken up. Last year in March when the lockdown took place and many wanted to run to the house of God as soon as the church was opened in September. But a lot of them have seemed to lose that passion, that fire, that eagerness, that urge. But I want to tell you, keep that zeal, keep that passion, keep that urge. Don't let it fade away for just like how what happened in the last year struck us suddenly, unexpectedly. That was just to wake us all up so that we know on whom we stand. Do we stand on Jesus Christ? Do we believe in his word? For if you believe in his word and if you trust him and have faith in him, he will lead you and he will guide you. And he is the one who has kept you alive till now. Oh, how many want to thank God for that? For the life that he's given, for the protection. I'm very sure that even as he walked around, went to buy things in the shop, as he went around for doing our various works and as he met different people, there would have been certain things that would have been passing around in the air. How many here can say that I've never would have ever come across or come in contact with someone who had COVID-19? No one, none of us can say that. We might not realize, we might not know whether we know it or not, God has kept us safe. You've got to be planted in the house of God. And I want to tell you, not every building that has a name board which says church is not a church. This is time for you to find the right place where you have the Holy Spirit leading the people who are called from darkness into light. You've got to get out of your house and you've got to find a Bible-believing, faith-based, Holy Spirit-led church which has made Jesus Christ as only Lord and God along with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. Do not wait for a better day to come. I was reading about how certain medical experts, I think from Australia, were saying that at the present rate, it'll be another six to seven years. Maybe only by 2007, will even 75% of the world will get the vaccination. 2027 is when they expect just 75% of the world to be vaccinated. So we want 100% of the world to be vaccinated for you to leave your house and come out and find a church. It might be too late. Jesus might come and take the real church away. And they're saying by the time in another seven years or so when 75% gets vaccinated, there'll be various pockets where these things can mutate, these things can take various forms and shape that the vaccination that those who already received can become ineffective. So you've got to trust in God more than the other things the people of the world are saying. That is why God has placed you here. The world is in confusion. The world is in chaos. The leaders of the world have no solution. They want to make proclamation. They want to say many things to come to power and get elected. But after they get elected, they say, I cannot change the course of the vaccination. There cannot be much that can be done. What can I do? Yes, what can they do? They are human beings. That's why you need to trust God. Church has the answer to all the problems of the world. Jesus Christ is the answer. His word his power is more than enough. This is the finest hour of the church. Because the world is in darkness, but the light, the truth is in the house of God. They cannot say what will happen when someone breathes their last. But the word of God is clear. He has told us where we would go when we accept him. There are only two places, heaven and hell. And Jesus is the only one who makes the difference. You've got to accept Jesus Christ. And you've got to be born again and you've got to be baptized in water and baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
and you've got to surrender your life and live for the Lord. For two will be there working, two will be there at home, two will be in the field, but one of them might be taken from all these different groups, the other would be left behind. Pray that each and every one of you are here, your entire family could be taken up, but no one would be left behind. Imagine how it would be if you're just there by yourself in that house that is there and that is not going to be the thing that is going to cause the biggest problem because the world will be in much more bigger confusion and problems and much more chaos than what is it in now and within a short while of the church being taken up the wrath of God upon the wicked will be poured out and those who are still left behind will have to experience that same that's why Jesus has repeatedly warned us and told us that we need to be serious in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ here we see in the Old Testament how God wanted the children of Israel to take possession of the promised land that he had spoken to Abraham that he would give to his descendants after that and so they went into bondage in Egypt and God delivered them with his mighty hand, with his outstretched arm, with signs and wonders. They crossed the sea. And there's still evidence of that. It is not a myth. There is evidence in that region and in that place of Israel living in Egypt and crossing the sea. And I'll share with you about it in the coming weeks. And they came to a land which was a wilderness and then they had to walk and reach the place that was promised for them and there came the time for them to possess it they were right at the borders of this land where the milk and honey was flowing that's why God told Moses to send one leader from each of the 12 tribes so they can go and survey the land and come back and tell so for 40 days they went and looked around and they came back and they said it truly flows with milk and honey in Numbers chapter 13 verse 27 and they even brought some of the fruit of the land it was such a blessed place that they had to cut one cluster of grapes and two of them put it on a pole between them and carried it down imagine the size of the grapes that they had to put it on a pole just one cluster and two people had to carry it they brought back pomegranates and figs. God wanted to show them that it was a prosperous and a land which was fertile, a land which was good. His word was true. God has got wonderful things in store for you. You might be right now in the wilderness, but I want to tell you as you listen to the voice of God and as you listen to his word and as you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you will be taken to that place where there'll be abundance and prosperity. It does not matter what position you're in in life. It does not matter even the qualification you have and it does not matter what kind of a salary you are receiving. For when you follow the system of the word of God, then he will do beyond what human systems can do for you. He will bring things into your life. He will bring people into your life who will change and transform and lift you up so expect wonderful things and great things in the coming days have faith in God that God is going to do marvelous and mighty things in your life and we the church are in such a wonderful time right now many might be wondering is this the time is this the hour I want you to cast aside all such doubts I want to let each and every one of you know that this is the time second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 it says in an acceptable time I have heard you and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. He's getting your focus. He's saying, listen, pay attention. Now is the acceptable time. Say now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. So you've got to expect God to save you at this very present moment. You've got to know that things will fall in place and you've got to expect it. But even as the time came for them to possess this promised land, we see that the enemy had 
prepared hindrances and barriers for them that there were giants occupying their possession they saw and they said numbers chapter 13 verse 28 saying nevertheless the people who dwell in the land are strong the cities are fortified and are very large and we saw the descendants of Anak there the cities were strong they were not small little villages which could be easily taken over but they were cities and they were fortified they had walls around and they had armies to protect it and they were very large and even the descendants of Anak the giants were there in that land and so when they saw that they lost all hope ten of them who went there to spy out the land they lost their strength they lost their faith sometimes you might look at the things in your life and the things that you see might make you lose your faith you might look at the problems you have like as if they are giants certain sicknesses and certain diseases and certain problems financial and otherwise of problems in your marriage problems in your family among your relatives maybe in the place that you're working might look like they're giants or that they cannot be overcome Israel saw these giants and they gave up all hope but I want to tell you and encourage you there is no giant that you cannot take down that there is no sickness that you cannot overcome there is no disease there is no problem that God cannot give you victory over for he said in his word in Luke chapter 18 verse 27 the things which are impossible with men are possible with God when Mary the mother of Jesus was a virgin the angel Gabriel came and told that she would bear the very son of God and she said I do not know a man I'm not married for that the angel Gabriel said in Luke chapter 1 verse 37 for with God nothing will be impossible how many here can say that you're born again and you're saved lift up your hands and say I'm born again and I'm saved you have such faith thank you, you can put your hands down if you believe in that then you can believe anything else because when Jesus looked at his apostles and disciples and said about how it would be difficult for certain people to get saved that they asked Jesus then who can be saved for that Jesus answers and tells them in Mark chapter 10 verse 27 with men it is impossible but not with God for with God all things are possible when you believe so strongly with such assurance that you're saved what the disciples and the apostles thought was impossible asking who can be saved Lord if this is a requirement but all of you have the assurance because you're not just saying by just reading the Word of God by just listening to me but you're saying because you've seen God in your life you feel his presence you feel his touch you feel him move and you feel him deliver and do wonderful things in your life that's why you're saying that when you believe in that how much more you need to believe that God can do all things for all things are possible for him he says to Abraham and Sarah and Genesis chapter 18 verse 14 is anything too hard for the Lord then nearing a hundred years of age a time it would have been impossible for them to have a child but he's looking at them and saying is anything too hard for the Lord that's how he called and formed a nation that's how he made Abraham the father of nations and Sarah the mother of nations isn't that a strong message your own father for hundred years he had no child and then you were born after when he was hundred years old yes or no He's your father's father's father we are all connected to Abraham through Jesus Christ when you see the testimony in your own life how much more will it happen for each and every one of you whatever you need what will be the impossible situation that you're facing that's why God is saying is anything too hard for the Lord at the appointed time I will return to you according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son whatever you're expecting whatever you have hope for I want to tell you you shall have it look at the people in your life and encourage them tell them each and every day you shall have this 
Tell them you shall have the job. Tell them you shall have the promotion. Tell them you shall have the money. Tell them you shall have the health that you need. And if they're looking to have a child, tell them you shall have a son. You shall have a daughter based on what they want. I want to tell each and every one of you, whatever you need in your life, you will have it. I have no doubt about it. Hallelujah. Thank God and clap your hands in faith in advance for what you're going to receive. That is why I want to meet each and every day this week. So that you can come and prepare yourself. Abraham and Sarah followed the Lord through their life. It took almost 25 years for the promise of God to be fulfilled. They were faithful. They did not go back to their own people. They left and they were staying there alone in tents each and every day by themselves because God was working in their life. You got to see the life of Abraham and Sarah and then you got to see the life of Isaac and Rebecca. Then you got to see the life of Jacob and Rachel. All three of these, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is a God who made a miracle in their life because all three of them were barren. All three of them were having no children after they got married. Right from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, they had to pray, they had to intercede. And that's when God stepped into their life and performed that miracle. I preached that message some time ago. If you want, you need to get a copy and listen to it and encourage yourself in that. There are promises of God for every part and area of your life that you need to claim, that you need to write down and you've got to speak it out each and every day till the day you receive it and see it with your own eyes. Do not give up. Nothing is hard for your God. I've heard of testimonies of a woman, a Baptist preacher who did not believe in miracles was taken by a man of God who believed in it and who was conducting a healing deliverance service. He brought, called this pastor who was very young and he didn't believe in miracles or signs and wonders. He didn't believe in the supernatural. He called him and said, come, I want to hold your hand and lay it on all these people. And so he called all the people who were sick and he made this man who did not believe held his hand and laid it on all the people who were standing there. And one such lady who was standing there was one who had done a hysterectomy. She had removed a uterus. And after a few months, she found that she had a baby. She went back to the doctor, to the gynecologist and said, Doctor, weren't you the one who performed the removal of my uterus some time ago? He said, yes, I'm very you're sure you did that. And he said, yes, I did that. Then he said, why don't you examine me? He said, why should I examine you? Examine where my womb is. And he said, what? There is nothing there. He said, no. She said, examine. And he got a shock. He said, there's a baby woman. How is that possible? I was the one who pulled out the uterus. The prayer and the laying on of hands by a man who didn't have faith, that transformed that man and he became a mighty man of God. Hearing that testimony, there is nothing too hard for God. Nothing is impossible for him. There might be giants occupying your possession, what God has given you. It is time for you to strike them down with the anointing and the power of God. Face the giant. Every time you come to the house of God, it is a call for war that you've accepted. The devil knows that when you come here, you're going to get victory. That is why he tries to stop many people from even coming here. Because when you come here, you connect with God, you receive his power, you receive his promise, you receive his word, and then you strike down the devil. That is why he wants to stop you even before you get here. But you've got to fight and make it and receive his power. And God will be glorified in your life. When they saw the giants, they were shaken up. If you're unbelieving, you cannot take what has been given to you by God. These unbelieving Israelites could not take possession. They said of themselves in Numbers chapter 13 verse 31, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they came back and told the whole group of people and gave them a bad report. And they said the land devours its inhabitants. Doesn't it sound like certain diseases and sicknesses that we have, certain problems that you might face? How? A financial problem. A vicious cycle of loan after loan after loan of taking money to pay what is already owned. That's what this land looked like to them. A land that devours its inhabitants. 
that now they saw that maybe the land opened up and some people were eaten up by the rocks but they came to that conclusion because of the demonic evil presence that was there you got to change that thinking you cannot say oh this sickness oh this cancer it is going to eat and you're going to go from one stage to the other and finally you're going to end it oh this is going to be the end of you you stopped walking now you're lying down in bed and then slowly waiting for the last day no do not accept do not believe that that's what the devil wants you to believe and think of they saw these men as men who were very strong and powerful and they said there we saw the giants we were like grasshoppers in our own sight they didn't have faith in their own abilities they made themselves to be grasshoppers the giants didn't look at them and tell them you are grasshoppers they said we were like grasshoppers in our own sight what a negative confession to make and these people said so we were in their sight now how can they say that so we were in their sight they went as spies the people of the land would have not even noticed them they're not supposed to see that they were there here they're speaking up for those as if they gave a report and told them oh we saw you and you look like grasshoppers green and hopping around that's not how the situation was but that's how they saw hebrews chapter 3 was 19 the bible says and they could not enter in because of unbelief you will not be able to take possession of what god has already given to you he gave it oh nearly 500 600 years ago to his father abraham this land walk the length and the breadth for i have given it to you he gave that promise but they could not enter because of their unbelief you few have even a little bit of unbelief you will be the one struggling you will look at all the problems that are there you look at all the negative symptoms that's what your eyes will be on you got to change the way in which you see you got to see like how god sees you got to look for the positive markers you cannot keep looking at the negative things and glorifying the evil and the devil's devices and keep talking about all the failures it is time for you to start talking about the positive things that are there oh when you see that little shoot coming out when you see that one little leaf coming up you got to oh make a big deal of it you got to tell people oh today i felt this today i saw this today i feel fine i think this is going to happen you got to start talking in faith and as you keep talking it is like you pouring water upon that plant that is going to grow and it is going to become a tree and it is going to bear fruit and it is going to be a blessing for you for years and years to come focus on that which is good and that which god wants you to look at the lovers of the world cannot take possession not only were they unbelieving but they could not take possession because they loved egypt more than they loved the promised land that god was giving them they were out of the world but the world was not out of them many christians won miracle signs and wonders but they still confused about how they want to follow the lord they don't want to give their whole heart and their whole life they want to pour it all out they don't do that what does it say in numbers chapter 14 it says so the congregation lifted up their voices and cried and wept that night when they had heard that bad report oh the giants in the land it is impossible and at that time they complained against moses and aaron and they said if only we had died in the land of egypt and then they said in verse 3 why has the lord brought us see how they've gone into a negative spiral downward turn don't ever waste your time in tears which have no positive outcome especially also all of you who are here after jesus christ came and died and finished it at the cross there is only righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost even when we lose someone in our life in our family i am standing here it is 10 years would be 11 years since i lost my father but he has gone to a better place and my heavenly father has become my father it is almost like god has promoted me because god the father of heaven and earth is now taking care of the fatherless and he is the defender of those who do not have someone to defend them you got to come to that full understanding and acceptance 
But here they went down and down. They wept all night and they lifted up their voices and they cried. When you cry, there's someone who is listening. Even if he's not around, at the time you start crying, he'll come and he'll be very happy and he'll be jumping around and dancing around. That is your enemy, the devil. And then he'll start pouring in all the negative thoughts and keep adding and adding. You'll go from one to one down level to another lower level to another lower level, not from strength to strength, from weakness to weakness to weakness till you're completely knocked down and paralyzed and till you reach the point of death. He's not going to stop. You grieve God and the Holy Spirit cannot operate and move when you're weeping and you're mourning and you're not looking at God's word and accepting and you start making statements like this how they complained against Moses and Aaron and then they started complaining against God and saying why has God brought us to this place why God why this why that and start talking things that is not going to help at all if there is one who can help you it is the Lord Jesus Christ and you got to always exalt him and lift him up and keep him in that high place and never look at him in a negative fashion but they said, why the Lord has brought us to this land to fall by the sword? That our wives and children should become victims. They already saw them falling, being cut by the sword. They saw their wife and they thought, oh, my wife is going to be cut by the enemies. The giants are going to cut them up. My children, oh, my children are going to be killed. Nothing has happened. God is still there. They saw the power of God. They still had the pillar of fire by night and the cloud of covering by day. Every time we come here, we're blessed with the presence of God and His word. You have seen miracles and signs and wonders. And if you're saying, I am not able to remember it, if you're alive this morning, you're here in the house of God after what happened last year to the entire world, that itself is a miracle. At least let that inject some faith inside of you. But they saw their wives and their children being cut down, all dying all around. Do not ever see, visualize negative things. Do not visualize death. That's why they say, would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? They want to go back. At no point say, oh, my old life was better. I wish I would go there. The people of the world are seem to be doing fine and well that's what lot thought when he looked at sodom and gomorrah he did not know what god was already planning to do there and what did they do in numbers chapter 14 verse 4 they said to one another let us select a leader and return to egypt as if they can cross the red sea by themselves now see what low level of faith they had they wanted to select a leader and return to Egypt. It shows that they lost their mind. Can't even one of them say, tap the other person and say, look at the pillar of fire. Look at the cloud of covering. Take this manna that you ate. It fell from the sky. It has been falling every day. Look at the rock which has been following you and has been giving water to quench your thirst. Yes, the rock that followed them. As they went through the wilderness, a rock followed them. And from that rock came water out. Where there was no water, they got water. There were signs and wonders and miracles all around happening each and every day. But they failed to look at that. Because they loved Egypt more. And they despised the promised land of God many Christians leave the world but they're still not completely into the Lord they do not like the things of the Lord it says in Psalms chapter 106 verse 24 then they despised the pleasant land they did not believe his word verse 25 it says but complained in their tents and did not heed the voice of the Lord Psalm 106 verse 24 they despise the land they despise the promise that God had given them the pleasant land that was there 
Many despise the church. Many despise praise and worship. Many despise Bible reading. Many despise prayer. Oh, they might be in your family. Ouch. You call them for prayer. They might say, oh, I'm busy. I'm not coming. Oh, do you have to pray so long? Can you pray short? Can you finish all this quickly? Why is the service so long? If you have to keep singing, you have to keep shouting. Do I have to sing? Do I have to clap my hands? What is all this that all of you are doing? I don't like it. I like the world. I like that music. I like the way they did that things there. Oh, I want to go back there and sneak in there for some time and then come back. Once in a way, take a sip of something. Once in a way, take a puff of something. Then you will not be able to possess. That's what I'm trying to say. I know you're struggling. But unless you cut off all of those and completely yield to the Lord, that is why we have a week of praise and worship, hoping that that will touch and transform and sever that unnecessary, unholy ties that are there. The cords and the chains that are pulling constantly like a hook. That's how a fisherman, an angler, catches a fish, puts a small little treat. An insect or a worm which is still alive on the hook and throws it. With a tackle with a shiny, glittering feather that spins in the water and it catches the light and it flashes. And the fish which is under the water suddenly sees something darting and flashing and full of life and it can sense that that is food but it does not know there is a hook that is connected to it it goes and grabs it and yes for a little while there is something that goes inside the stomach but something else also gets stuck to its mouth at the first pull the angler will let go of the line little tug and it knows oh got a bite the fish is pulling they won't immediately try to draw it in. They want to tire out the fish. They'll pull a little bit and the fish will start realizing, what is this? Something has got stuck. And so they let it loose. So it goes back and it thinks, oh, maybe I'm free. Then after some time, again, he'll draw the line. Not fully, a little bit. Then again, he'll release. He'll go on till the point that the fish is completely drained of all energy and there is no fight left in that fish. And that is when pull it completely out. That's what the devil does. He's got a hook on many people. Oh, go. Yes, you go. You go to the church. You read the Bible a little bit. You pray a little bit. But I know when I can pull you, at what time I can pull you. Right at the time when you're going to have the breakthrough. Going to from one level to the next. Oh, yes. Make a decision and come all these days every morning. Just at the dawn of breakthrough, don't let that hook pull you out. Coming all the days on the sixth day. Oh, I don't know what happened today. On that last day of breakthrough, when you have received that strength, when you have proved to heaven and earth and hell that you are faithful and committed to God and you believe in His word, that He can trust you with His riches. He's looking for those who will be faithful, those whose heart is loyal to him. You've got to show your loyalty. You expect that from everywhere in your workplace. If you're a team leader or you're working in your office, you expect your team members to be there each and every day. You expect that in your marriage. How will it be if six days my husband comes, six days my wife comes home, and the seventh day they go somewhere and then they come back the next day. You'll be okay with that. That's the only little thing. Once in a season, they suddenly wander. You wouldn't accept that. You've got to prove to God that you're faithful. So you've got to make the decision, do you want to come throughout this week? Are we even going to have anything to do with God every morning throughout this week? And here they're saying, in Exodus chapter 16, as they complain in verse 3, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat. God has brought them out with such signs and wonders and they're thinking about the pots of meat that they had. And then they're saying, when we ate bread to the full, again, Numbers 11 verse 5, he's saying, we remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt. 
the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this mana before our eyes. Each and every day, morning, afternoon, night, mana, mana, mana. Food of heaven and angels fell down and they found fault with that. Because they loved Egypt more than they loved the promised land that God wanted to take them to. You've got to prove that you love your God and all that he is. What God has revealed in his Bible, you've got to know about it and you've got to pursue it. I'm not someone who got into music by singing. But when I knew that God loved singing, then I started singing. I'm not someone who even enjoyed singing. I like to be very quiet. So for me to stand up here and talk for two hours or make some noise with my mouth, it is because what God loves and wants me to do, that I want to do it. I'll be very happy if throughout the day I don't have to say a single word except to God. I can tell very clearly that I speak more to God than anyone else, verbally, vocally, because I make it a point to pray my prayers with my voice out. I don't pray in silence. Why? I wanted to be someone who would speak more to God than to men. So four hours if I'm praying in the morning, then four hours I'm speaking with my mouth open. People in the room or people in the next room can hear it. Sometimes it might be early in the morning, they jump out and come, what is this sound, what you're making? Yes, it takes a lot of effort, it dries your throat. It might be difficult certain times when you're physically not up to it, but still, each and every time I make it a point to pray to God, praise Him, and whatever I say, I want to say in a way that it is said with my mouth. Why? Because I know God is writing everything that we say. And He will have to write every prayer request that I ask Him each and every day, morning and evening, again and again, till he gives it and he has given it and he will continue to give. We've got to love what God has told us to do. Delight yourself in the Lord. You've got to delight yourself in the Lord and he'll fulfill and give you the desires of your heart. Take your eyes off the things that you need and set your eyes on the Lord and as you keep following him, he will give you all the things that you actually need in your life. Yes, don't let the problems be bigger than God. Let God be bigger than the problems. Forget your problems throughout this week and for the rest of your life, forget all of them. Yes, pray to God, request, but let your eyes and your focus be on God and praising Him and worshipping Him and rejoicing in His presence and taking delight in His company then all the other things will fall in place automatically. He will give you, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Majority of you can testify to that this morning. I have no doubt about that. You've got to have the right attitude for possession. When God looked at all of them that were there, lacks of them, He could see Two who had faith. Numbers chapter 14 verse 24. He says, but my servant Caleb, but my servant, he could tell. He was almost boasting among all that are there in the world. Will God say, but my servant? And will he tell your name? Because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully. Are you following the Lord fully? Caleb had a different attitude and remained loyal to me. That's what God is saying. He isn't like the others. He has faith in me. God should see the faith you have in him. You've got to love the choice that God makes for you. That's what Caleb and Joshua were able to say. 
Numbers chapter 14 verse 6 it says Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh were able to say the land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land see what report they are giving completely opposite to what the other 10 the majority gave they said oh that land devours its inhabitants we cannot go there we will be cut with the sword and our wives and our children will all die we will all die but what they are saying Joshua and Caleb are saying it is an exceedingly good land you got to say that the presence of God is exceedingly good the house of God is wonderful and marvelous I love God more than I love anything else in the world oh God is great God is good and when you say that that's how you are a witness many struggle to be a witness unto God because they're not fully sold out for the Lord but those who have their cup running over and they're bubbling over they cannot keep their mouth shut they have to open their mouth and they have to declare and they have to proclaim the praises of God they cannot be silent at all it's only the believers who take possession numbers 13 30 Caleb quieted the people before Moses sometimes you got to quieten the people who are there talking negative things around you sometimes even in church you should not look at those who are not praising or cooperating or who are not having that level of faith you got to increase your faith you got to sing louder if you see someone staring at you sing even louder maybe go stand next to them and clap and dance even more than you would normally do either they will join along with you or they'll have to make the choice Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said let us go up at once see the eagerness not someday another day maybe the next generation will experience it right now let us just be quiet and just continue no he said let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome how many here can say let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome amen look at someone and say take possession shout at them you're sitting a little bit one meter away or so you got to shout that they jump from their seat the way you shout at them take possession why for you are well able to overcome every time you take possession of the various parts of your life your health your body your mind in your family in all the different areas of your life you get stronger and stronger see the attitude of Joshua and Caleb they knew what would happen to them they say in Numbers chapter 14 verse 9 do not fear the people of the land do not rebel against the Lord for they the inhabitants of the land of Canaan are our bread their protection has departed from them they could see that the protection they had was removed by God because they were able to see with eyes of faith they were able to notice weakness in their enemy but here the faithless people and the unbelieving people saw the enemy stronger than themselves and they saw the weakness in themselves but here these two Caleb and Joshua saw that they had weakness and they were unprotected and they saw how they could take over this is the way yes we can do this we can go there we can get this done we can then be able to get it another version of the says of the Bible says we are able to gobble them up right now that's why they're saying they are our bread the giants were the bread for Caleb and Joshua because what eats you get stronger but if you eat it you get stronger you got to eat your enemy you got to eat that problem and then you'll end up getting more strength you devour the strength of what is opposing you and your strength increases you got to know that so don't lose in any battle every battle every victory that you have makes you stronger and stronger 
Oh, why don't we stand up at this time? And look unto the Lord Jesus Christ. How many here want to come every day this week, every morning at 6 o'clock till Sunday? Sunday we'll meet at 8 as usual to come and praise and worship God so that He can take possession of what God has given you for you have the faith, for you believe that all that you see God has given you belongs to you and you want it. How many want to say, I want to come every morning throughout this week? So let us have it. Amen. Every morning, those of you watching, come every morning at 6 o'clock to the church and participate. And may God lead you and guide you. Why don't we close our eyes and pray at this time? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you, Lord, for you brought us to that point, to this time in which we can, oh Lord, take possession. We see the world is ripe for a harvest. We see, oh Lord, oh your presence in our midst and you've come and oh you moved in our midst and you've blessed us and you've touched us and you've delivered us and you've healed us. It is to strengthen us and let us know that you are real and that what you did for us you will do for all the people of the world. And let us as a church be the light that shines and let us be, oh, the ones who reach out to the lost and let us, oh Lord, change the atmosphere over this land, change the situation over this land, oh Lord, that, oh God, the people would be convicted and convinced by your presence, oh Holy Spirit. That is why we want to come each and every morning to exalt you and throne you and, oh Lord, saturate this place with the presence of God, this city, this state, this nation, this entire world, Oh, let it see your light shining. Let it hear your truth. Oh, let your presence, oh Lord, fill this place. That every darkness, every protection of the devil over the evil ones and the wicked ones would be removed. Oh, every stronghold, oh Lord, everything that is fortified by the devil would be broken. That the walls of Jericho would come crashing down. Oh, you've shown us, oh Lord, even in the past that you were able to do that. Do that even now, O oh Lord. We expect and we come each and every morning with great expectation. Pray that you'll strengthen each and every one, O oh Lord. That they'll be able to make it each and every day and have a breakthrough. And that, O oh Lord, they'll be able to celebrate and rejoice and get stronger by the end of this coming week, O oh Lord Jesus. Bless them all, O oh Lord, in Jesus' wonderful and mighty name. Amen. God bless you.